the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. If I could, for a second, go back and think about the cross before Christ. As you may or may not know, the cross was a form of what's called capital punishment. So when someone did something very, very wrong, and the state decided that he should die for this sin, they would punish him by killing him. And what would be the point of killing someone for a very severe deed that he had done without first making sure that everyone in the state could see that person when they died. And so the cross was perfect for that reason because it wasn't something that happened very quickly but over a very long period of time. The crucified would be crucified on the cross and be set there for the people as an example for the people for not just a couple of hours or a couple of days but for very, very long, perhaps even weeks. So the cross before Christ was about death, but Christ was able to transform the cross. Imagine with me, you or I walking and seeing the crosses of those criminals and seeing the accusation of the first criminal and seeing that the accusation is robber. You would look up at the cross and say, I'm no robber, I'm not worried, this is not for me, this is not mine. You would go to the next cross and see the accusation, and the accusation would say murderer, and then you would say, not me, I'm no murderer, this cross is not for me. And then imagine you go to the cross of Christ, and you look up at it, and you see King of the Jews, and you think this is no accusation, but rather a title, and you look for the accusation, why this man deserved to be crucified, and you look and you look, and you begin to see your sins from yesterday and your sins from tomorrow, and you realize that instead of not me, this was for me. The innocent was crucified for me. When Christ died on the cross, He died an innocent man. There's no need to reiterate it, but I will. And he died for your sins and for my sins. He therefore transformed us, and we have been transformed through this cross. That's why St. Paul says in Galatians that we read, but God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's something for us to be proud of, because for my sins he died on the cross. When I think about transformation, I think about our father, St. Peter. And I think about how he used to be a fisherman. And he was a fisherman with the sons of, of Zebedee, James, and John. And I don't know if you've ever heard the term cursing like a sailor. But back then, their mouths said whatever. They cursed and they swore. They were different. They might have gone to the temple once in their lives or twice. They might have went to the synagogue when they had the chance, but they were of the world. And Christ came to them and changed them and transformed them. The words that they used to say no longer came into their mouth. And then during the Passion Week, as we read in the Gospel of St. Luke yesterday, Satan came and asked for Peter. And he said, I want to sift him like wheat. I want to separate him from you. And once separated from Christ... Peter went back, St. Peter, our father, went back to his own self, his old self, and cursed and swore and became just like he used to be. Although Christ had transformed him, he went back to his own former self. And then you read in the Gospel again of St. Luke, and it's so hard to read because, as you all know, St. Peter was in sort of a courtyard and Christ was inside the being judged by the Sanhedrin and there was a door on the other side guarded by a servant girl and Peter was stuck in the middle and every time his face got close to the fire and people looked and saw who he was they accused him of being one of his and he swore and he said I'm not him I don't know him I swear I do not know the man and he cursed and went back to his former self 
And like I said, we read in the Gospel of St. Luke that Christ turns around and looks at him. And it's breathtaking. And I was reading about that look. And the writer was saying, that look was not a look of anger or judgment. Christ himself said, and he did not come to judge but to save. That look wasn't even about disappointment. That look was about love. It perhaps was the same look when Peter, with all great faith, was walking on the water and then looked down and saw and said, how can I, a human, be walking on water and fell into the water? When Christ reached out and grabbed him, that was the same look. It's the same look as you or I have where our sons and daughters fall for the first time and we say, are you okay? Get back up. It's a look of pure divine love. So Peter's tears perhaps weren't tears of shame, perhaps weren't even tears of guilt, but tears of regret. How could I separate myself from Christ? So we have the same chance now to be transformed. I'm going to say something that's a little bit harsh. Usually I'm much more positive than this. But what's worse than someone who lives in darkness? What's worse than someone who lives in darkness is someone who lives in darkness and think they live in light. Or what's worse than when you ask for someone to bring you a cup of steaming hot water and they bring you a cup of cold water is if they bring you a cup of lukewarm water because you neither nor here nor there know the difference we sometimes fall into this trap where we turn back to our former selves. Although we have been transformed, we sometimes fall back into our former selves. And sometimes, even worse, is that we fall back into our former selves and we don't even know. So today is our opportunity to fix this great wrong. You who have been transformed, I who have been transformed, to go back to my former self is a shame. So when you stand up in front of the Lord, in front of his cross, the prayer is simple. O oh, you who transformed me before, transform me again. Make sure that I'm grafted with you on your sweet olive tree, on the holy wood of the cross. Christ said to his disciples, there's no greater love than someone who dies for his friends. But you're better than that, your sons and daughters. If you're sons and daughters, then you are part of him. The resurrection is about transformation, and therefore you also me, must be transformed in order to partake from it. So like I said, pray with all your heart. Pray that God transform your heart again, and look at the Savior who looks at you with eyes of forgiveness and eyes of comfort so that you can be transformed, so that you can truly enjoy the joy of the resurrection. There's no better place and no place that I would rather be than here with you all at the foot of the cross asking for Christ to transform us all to our former selves and glory be to God forever.